Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see how to calculate the schedule for a straight line depreciation method. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today's video. Let's go! So here we have the template we're going to use today. And what we have here, we have three inputs, then I have three calculations, and then I have the depreciation line method scheduled in here. Let's see how that works. So as inputs, the first one we have here is the asset lifetime, which is 10 years. That's the length of the operation asset. Then we have the asset value, which in this case here is $1 million. Then we have the residual value, which is $100,000. The residual value is nothing more than the value of the asset once the lifetime is gone by. Then we have the depreciable value, which is the difference between the asset value and the residual value. In this case, $900,000. Depreciation percentage is by how much the asset will depreciate every single year. In the straight line depreciation method, the asset depreciates a fixed amount of value every single year. In this case here, because we're going to depreciate it in a 10 years lifespan, then we're going to depreciate it 1 over 10 years, as we can see in the formula here, result in a 10% depreciation per year. I calculate the depreciation value in dollars per year, which is essentially 10% of $900,000, which is our depreciation value. That's it. We already know what is the depreciation value every single year. What we need to do next is to put it in a schedule. Let's see how to do it. In the schedule below here, I have three rows. The first one is the open book value, which is the book value of the asset for that given year. We start with 900, then in the first year, the open book value is still 900, and then it reduces by the depreciation value. In this case, $90,000. The way I calculate it, I just refer the cell back to the end book value from the previous period. Next, I calculate here depreciation, and I use an if or statement formula in here. We're going to go through the formula later on. Let's go to the next line first. Then, in the last row, we have the end book value, which is the difference between the open book value and depreciation, as you can see in the formula in the cell. That's it. And if you keep moving around here, you can see that the formula just repeats itself. Now, let's calculate the depreciation the schedule. In order to have the dynamic formula in here, we need to account for two things. First, for period zero, we should have no depreciation. Because the assumption I'm using here is that we purchase this asset in the very last day of the year. Therefore, in the first year, or year zero in this case here, we should have no depreciation. And the other condition for our formula is that we should have no depreciation, no open book value, and no end book value for the years after the lifetime. The asset should be fully depreciated by the end of last year or the asset lifetime, which in this case here is year 10. And as you can see here on cell R12, depreciation value at the end of year 10 is zero. That's going to write the formula having these two conditions in mind. I'm going to come here and press F2 so you can see my formula in here. So what I have here, I have first if condition, and then we have to consider two conditions. Either one or the other should be true. And for this, we're going to use an OR statement. And in the OR statement, I'm going to type the two conditions we have. The first one being that the operating year that we are evaluating the depreciation should be zero, or the operating year that we are evaluating the depreciation schedule should be greater than the lifetime. If one of these two conditions is true, the formula should return zero. Otherwise, the formula should return the depreciation value, which is in here in cell F8. That's it. That's the only thing we need to do. And once you copy and paste, everything across, as I just did in here, you are going to have dynamically depreciation schedule, and you can check it by just testing the inputs. If now you change the asset lifetime to 12, then everything is going to be recalculated, and if now you change to 15, 
everything is calculated accordingly. If you add all the depreciation together, the number you get in here is going to be always equal to the depreciation value in here. That's going to change now the value of the asset. Let's say $500,000. Then we're going to have $400,000 as a depreciation value and $400,000 in your schedule. As you can see, everything adds up correct and you have a dynamically and robust depreciation schedule to use in the straight line depreciation method. That's it for today, folks. I hope you have learned. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I see you in the next video. Bye.